you have your Bibles this morning, if you turn with me, if you will, uh, to the book of Matthew, chapter 18, and we're going to start at verse uh, uh, 23, 21, it's fine, and, and I want to explain something to you, and I hope that it help, help you along the way, when you have it, can you, can you say amen? Amen. If you look, can you say, Lord, have mercy? Got some people who's got some Lord have mercy, so we go, we go and wait just a little bit longer while, while the Holy Spirit guides you to Matthew chapter 18, if you will, verse number 20, 21, 23. Amen. <clears throat> while you're looking, I want to just uh, pause for a moment uh, the, the disposition, the position that uh, the unfaithful steward is in. Uh, he's in a position to, uh, that uh, he owes enough to run three cities uh, to the king. And uh, he's been borrowing money. Uh, he's been uh, digging this debt ditch for some time. Uh, to the point that the king uh, realizes and begins to take the kind of people that owe him some stuff. Uh, and he decides to call in his debts. And he gets to the king. And you, you'll find me uh, now uh, at verse 25. Um, he gets to the king. And he owes the king roughly uh, millions of dollars. And the king requires his money. What's at stake is that if he does not pay the king, his wife and his children, uh, will all be put in prison along with him until the debt is paid. And so he is, uh, I would imagine he's nervous, he is, uh, he's guilty. He know he owes the money. Have you ever owed somebody something? Uh, and then you know you owe it and they have every right to be upset with you. And he gets to the king uh, and the king looks at him and he asks for mercy to the king. And he says, have mercy on me. I, I pay you. Uh, have you ever uh, uh, just wanted to say to God, if you just give me one more chance. Amen. I'm just talking to five people that what I'm talking about right now. If you give me one more chance, I I'll do what's right. You know, I'm, 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 maybe I'm talking to three people that what I'm talking about. Right now. Just give me one more chance. I know I was wrong. I, I know I owe you. I know, I know you, you, you got me. That there's nothing I can do if you just give me one more chance, if you will. I, I promise you, I do right. And the king was moved with compassion and forgave him of that million dollar debt. And some of y'all act like, y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, I don't even know how to forgive somebody for $15. Y'all sitting there like, y'all just bad. I'll tell you, you tell all these. I, the king forgave him of a, 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 an amount that was astronomical. And, and he walked outside, and I don't know about you, but when I think about what God has forgiven me for, yeah. I just get happy inside. Amen. And he goes outside, and he finds a man that owes him roughly three days of labor. Now, before we, we, we attack him, considering that he had just left the king and escaped prison and had been so graciously endowed with the grace of the king and, and by his judicial power had released him. Uh, it may have gone through his mind that I want to do right now. Have somebody been so good to you that, that you thought, you know what, I, I, I want to do right by them. Because we miss this part, and so his psychological position may have been, and his disposition is, I'm going to go and find people that owe me money, so I can at least pay the king back some of the money, even though he's forgiven me. I just want to do right by the king. And so he walks out of his in, 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 in his ingratitude and grabs the young man by the neck, pulls him up to me, said, "You give me. My family was at stake." My, my children were at stake. I loaned you that forty dollars, and I almost lost everything. Amen. I'm trying to help somebody out get close to this. And 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 and, and the, now notice in the verse. I want you to notice very quickly the same thing that he said to the king. He 
his servant said to him. In the exact same words. <clears throat> the Bible says that he said to him. As he fell down to his feet. Have patience with me. And I will pay thee all. But the Bible says that he would not. And that's the problem when, 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 when whatever your intentions are about what you do. That, that, that the same situation that you were in. You act like you can't realize that somebody else needs the same forgiveness that you got. And, and, and we, we, we went about our life teaching uh, historically uh, not only the ingratitude of the servant, but we misrepresented forgiveness. Yeah, I'm going to show you that just for a moment. Because I want to free somebody this morning. Uh, so we can understand what forgiveness is and the power of forgiveness. Let me find my little point if you will. I had it here just a moment ago. Uh, and then I'm going, I'm going to take it from here. Uh, and so let's look at what happened for him initially. We'll notice that the Greek word apple uh, for maya literally means the sending away. It means that the king uh, uh, cast away or pardoned or was able to, to release him of, a, of a, a humongous debt. It means that he does it by his judicial will and authority when the legal system itself called for his demise. We notice that the rendering not only means to remit or to forgive debts, Matthew 6 verse number 12, but also sins uh, in Matthew 9 and verse number 2. It's important to understand the mindset of both the king and both uh, the person that is in debt and then the silent voice of the person who really is just at the mercy of the, of, of the master, who only says, have patience with me. Uh, it's important to understand that when God forgives you, God does not forgive you based on who you are, but God forgives you based on who he is. Y'all ought to say amen. Because if God forgives you based on who you are, mm, the king has no reason to forgive him of the dead. He is legally and all and he is legally and lawfully owed every dime, every cent that is due him. But looking at his position as a king. He takes the opportunity to show his divine wisdom, his ability to believe in folk when they have presented no re real history, to believe in them and say your sins are forgiven. I stopped by this morning to tell you that whatever you have done, God has forgiven you. But here's my problem. Because I fail to have an intimate relationship with God, and I'm struggling with understanding what God has done for me, I find myself, when dealing with my fellow men, treating him under the religious systems of my day. And in those religious systems, I have a right and the authority to execute judgment on you or you or him or her. And since it's by the book, and since I am now in the position of the Lord, and I don't really appreciate what God has done for me, you're about to be in a whole lot of trouble, according to Jesus. Are you with me right now? I'm wrestling with, as a human in the flesh, how can I forgive like God has forgiven? Amen. And don't mess everything up. Because I realize that the instant I'm unable to forgive, I incarcerate my wife and my children in this bitter spirit in which now I interact with everybody else in a matter of desperation and destitute spiritual thinking. Are you with me right quick? See, that's the why you look at folk that made you mad five years ago like you want to kill them today because you still have been incarcerated. Now watch this. Can I help you with this real quickly? The forgiveness that you do is systematic. Is, is legalization. It requires the person to do 
right by you. In a real sense, they are actually free from the debt because the king has released them from the debt. But you have incarcerated yourself with them because you harbor a spirit or energy inside of you that every time you see them, you roll your eyes and your blood pressure go up. Amen. Whenever they come by, they walk by. You can't even you can't even breathe right. You start you got to you start having heart palpitations. And every time you hear their name, you start to ugh. Every time you see them with something, you roll your eyes. You get upset with God because inside you have incarcerated them because you refuse to forgive them. Now notice, in forgiving them does not mean I will be hanging out with you and talking with you and playing with you. I never forget what you do. my mouth and talk about what you think you're doing. 
unto me. I got to give glory that the same God that gave, gave honor and reestablished my name, gave me a second chance, is able to give you a second chance. So I'm in no position to grab you by your neck when God could have grabbed me by my neck. I'm in no position to walk you down. When the folk knew what you was doing behind the scene, they'd be running you down. I'm in no position to look at you like I ain't never messed up because I just barely got away myself. I'm so thankful for what God has done for me who died on Calvary's cross. I can't hardly get upset with you because you remind me of me. And when you remind me of me, I have to remember God reached way down and saved me. I'm thankful God saved me. Y'all are saying amen. I'm thankful God saved me. See, people, people, the people, now, now watch the people that don't understand God. When you understand God, you got a whole list of people you mad at. Amen. Amen. You quick tempered because your emotions are sitting at the top. Right. And you don't understand that what happened to you, God's covered it. Amen. He covered it by the blood of Jesus. All right. And, 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 and he covered not only their sin, but he also has covered your sins. And, 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 and you 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 lack an appreciation. That, that before you were born, he, he knew he had to die on the cross to plead for you. God gave his only begotten son in order to cover your stuff. And you will never be able to pay God back the nerve of you to sit back and roll your eyes on who you don't like. Because if, it was, if God gave you the same treatment, God has no reason to like you, but your sins have been covered. I'm glad Y'all ought to say amen. amen. Now we're not getting back together. You don't owe me nothing, but it's covered by the blood of Jesus. Mm. Oh, praise God. I mean, I mean, boy, I wish I could preach all of this, but I gotta move. I gotta move. I gotta show you. I gotta show you. Here, here's our systems of forgiveness. Number one, I don't know what's going on this morning. I showed Miss Jeremy. <laughs> praise God. I just knew. I just knew I was in trouble. I knew I was in trouble, but amen, but you forgive me. It's, it's covered. Uh, it's, because if I take you in, I'm going to take you home with me tonight. I won't take you home with me tonight. Y'all need to stop taking people to the dinner table with you. You need, you need to cash that stuff away. Y'all need to stop. I'm telling you, it'll make you crazy. You'll get mad about something five years ago and be acting a fool with me, and everybody says, what's wrong with her? What's wrong with him? And what happened? Six years ago. He did it. Listen, she crazy. Six, you've been, you've been, you, you've been carrying your ex around for six years, and everybody you meet, you just beating the hell out of them every chance you get, cause you, cause you won't let them go. Cast them away. Get them over. Release them. Let it go. Look at your neighbor and say, Let it go. Help me, Dr. Wood. Help me right here. The first system, and the reason why forgiveness was not working, and Jesus was trying to teach them why forgiveness wasn't working, is because they had messed up the law. And the most dangerous thing in the church house is somebody who thinks they know the law. It's for trying to use the law and become guilty of male practice. And I'm going to show you some of y'all in just a few minutes. And, and here's the problem. You think you got scripture for your foolishness. All right? Okay, so the first one, I want you to Galatians, I mean, uh, Matthew chapter 5. I want you to look at Matthew chapter 5 and start at verse 22. Matthew 5, verse number 22. And I want to show you a system. This is a forgiveness system. Then I'm going to show you the weakness in the system. I'm going to show you the other system. I'm going to give this lesson to you. And I got to do it quickly, but if you write these down, you can study them to yourself and be able to, to look and see, yeah, what Brother Hamilton was after. And Matthew chapter 5, beginning at verse number 22, what you find is a system. That if you are in with your brother, he says, first, I want you to leave your gift at the altar. Is that in your Bible? Yes. Leave your gift at the altar and be what? Be what? Reconcile with who? Your brother. All right? So that's a form of forgiveness, a reconciliation. But now look down at verse number 27 or 26. Listen to what he says. He says, agree with your adversary. Your adversary what? Oh. Agree with your adversary what? And we're missing the word. Agree with your adversary. What? Quit. Now, okay, amen. Now, we, now you're looking at the Bible, skipping over words. 
it's important to read the whole scripture because it means everything. He said, now watch this. How many of you have had a problem with your brother or sister in Christ and just to get it over with, you said sorry and they said sorry. But you really didn't forgive them. Because, because, because of the impulsion of the system. And Jesus is trying to demonstrate to them from Matthew chapter 5 to Matthew chapter 18 that the, the, the system uh, in the area of grace and forgiveness uh, is in impulsive sometimes. So the only reason that I'm forgiving you quickly is because the preacher preached about it, but inside I'm still upset with you. Inside I'm still mad at you. I still can't stand you. I'm still hurt by you. But in order to get folk off my back, I will agree quickly, I'm sorry. And then he said, he's sorry. And y'all both say, y'all sorry. And then y'all just too sorry to tell the truth that y'all need Jesus. Y'all ought to say amen. Relationships in church don't get better because you do whatever you have to do just to get folk from looking at you. you, you, you some of us only saying we're sorry because we got caught. I'm, I'm sorry because you found out it was me talking about you. Yes, it was me talking about you, and I'm, I'm sorry. And I'm agree with you quickly, and then I have a fear of going to hell. So before you die, I die. But you know what? That's not forgiveness. That's not forgiveness. And so Jesus teaches a little more. He teaches the Beatitudes. He keeps teaching about judgment. Finally, he gets to chapter 18. It's one of your favorite scriptures. This is Adam's favorite scripture. Uh, Matthew chapter 18, uh, verse number 21. Uh, you, you'll see a system that's put in place 15 through 20. 15 through 20, if you will. Matthew 18, 15 through 20. He said, now, if somebody have a problem, you go to him and go to him alone. That's another, uh, not impulsive, but compulsive. It's compulsory. Why is it compulsory? It's a compulsory because if, if, if you come to me and I'm doing something wrong and you come to me and I won't listen to you and then I see you using the Bible to whoop me and then you're going to bring two old people in front of me and tell them what I did and show how I did it and let them witness you in front of me and then you're going to take me to the church. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be in compulsory position to say, you know what, I, I see you. I'm sorry. But I'm not sorry because of a godly sorrow. I'm sorry because I don't want you to take me. I'm sorry. And we talked this mess for years. But that wasn't what he was teaching. He was not teaching forgiveness that man. And, and, and here's the position. Here's the law, and here is the ungrateful servant. First of all, you're not in a position to take nobody before the church. It speaks to the legalism and the illuminated call. You, after being forgiven for all the stuff you've done, have the nerve to walk up to me and tell me if I don't straighten up, you won't take me before the church. We have one brother that is in compulsory state of mind. The other person is in the legality state of mind as if he had never messed up and has the nerve to say, well, he's going to do it I don't act right and he's using God's word to beat me into submission. But my heart was never into my repentance. And so Jesus said, you still don't get it. I got to teach you again. I got to teach you again because you don't get it. So I, I, God has said, I, the problem with the law is that it was impulsive. It brought about a compulsive reaction to the law of God. I'm trying to bring you, yes, it is good that they'll, that they'll respect me enough to say that they're, that they're sorry, but if they're not saying they're sorry from their heart, they're not really talking about anything. And yes, I, I'm saying what I'm saying because I just want to get this over with in Matthew chapter 5. In Matthew chapter 18, I'm compelled to do it out of fear of being humiliated at the church. In Matthew chapter 18, I have a, a judge who's not even able to judge me with two or three other people that's telling me I better stand up and they're going to do something. And you know that attitude and that spirit runs through the body of Christ when we walk around trying to say, oh, well, until he repent, we're we, we going to treat him like a heretic. You know the problem, two problems here. Number one, for you to be that ungrateful for how God has forgiven you, you don't want me to repent in the first place because you hate me in the first place. The whole thing, you hope I don't repent. You want to see me lose my soul. And you know if you keep the pressure on and I'm in my flesh and you in your flesh, all you're going to get is a flesh reaction. You can't make me repent. My mama used to whoop me and couldn't make me cry. How you? Oh, man, he repented. And so Jesus said, what, well, two or three are gathered in my name? There I am in 
and this. That system was a powerful system, but it was a false system. And he was trying, he was not teaching that was the right system used. He was saying, look at your system. They still do not exemplify what forgiveness is. Third time I'm gonna bring it up. First of all, you can't have people repent or say they're sorry because it's an impulsive. You can't do it because it's compulsive. You can't force somebody and you can't legally mandate somebody that they gotta repent or turn from what they're doing and think that it's truly repentance. The only thing that works with truly repentance is a godly sorrow heart. Second Corinthians chapter 5, what's godly sorrow? It's a godly sorrow heart when you realize that what I did, I didn't do against my brother, but I sinned against God. And I'm so hurt that the God that came a second chance and a third chance and a fourth chance and I keep messing up that I'm sorry God I'm sorry and I need you to take this stuff away from me I'm not worried about them folk but from the bottom of my heart Lord I'm thankful for your dying on Calvary's cross I'm thankful that you said not a mumbling word I'm thankful that the blood came streaming down I'm thankful that you woke me up this morning I'm thankful that you could have killed me but you didn't kill me I'm thankful that you said I'm thankful that you gave me a house. I'm thankful that you gave me a job. I'm so thankful, Father, for what you've done for me. I can't think about what people are doing to me because of what you've done for me. Thank you, Jesus. I'm trying to teach you forgiveness. I'm trying to get you to understand something. That you cannot, through fear, cause folks to truly repent. You cannot, through the impulsivity of threats, make people forgive or learn forgiveness. And then legally, you cannot by the law, by the, by the Jewish law, cause folk to forgive. So he asked him a question. Peter said, well, we've been talking about forgiveness since Matthew chapter 5. We've been talking about it way back.